Dragon's Dogma 2 is the highly anticipated sequel to the 2012 release of Dragon's Dogma. An exciting open world full of discoveries and terrifying monsters. If you're unfamiliar with the series, don't worry. You can hop right into this game with no knowledge from the first one. I have finished the first one and put a lot of time into this game and I would love to share with you what you can expect from Dragon's Dogma 2 before you buy it. Stick around to the end to see my personal thoughts and rating of this game. I've just got to take down a record of your name and face. Come on. Step forward. After an extensive character creation, you wake up in a cell. A prisoner forced to labor deep in well some done. mines. It doesn't take long before disastrous events help you escape and discover oh, you I'm are risen. arisen. A special person chosen to hunt down and fight the dragon. With this newfound knowledge, you will need to master a vocation or two, make some friends, and fight through hundreds of vicious monsters on the grand adventure ahead. Do you have what it takes? We have no means of exploiting our enemy's weakness. Dragon's Dogma 2 can be quite violent with all the fighting. Sometimes you will come up against human enemies, but most of the time it will be mythical monsters like goblins, griffins, and dragons. There was blood splatter and some dismemberment of certain monsters. And there were a couple beasts with exposed breasts, but no nipples. It is worthy of its M rating, but most of the time, the game doesn't cross that line. Yet, how will Here, we conduct all manner of procedures pertaining to vocations. If there is aught I may assist you with... Choosing the right simple. vocation is paramount to your survivability, but not permanent. You start the game with one of four basic vocations, unlocking the rest as you progress. While you fight, you gain experience for your character level and discipline for your vocation level. Discipline will be used at vocation guilds to learn new skills in your chosen vocation. That is also where you can change your vocation. Each vocation has unique skills and fighting styles. It's a lot of fun testing them out to see which one fits best. So we are able to connect to and traverse other realms beyond this one. Always at your side will be your very own customized pawn. Pawns are beings from the Rift, sworn to obey the Arisen during their journey. They will help you in combat and mule all the random items you don't want to carry yourself. You'll oversee your pawn's vocation, skills, gear, and bags. They'll loot chests and pick things up off the ground for you as well. Your pawn will even call out when they see a chest or a treasure nearby. They do a very good job relieving some of the burden you have as an Arisen. Just yonder looks to be a good spot for harvesting ingredients. Tis a gate by which we of the Pawn Legion may cross Earth into this world. Scattered throughout the game, you will find Rift Stones. At these locations, you can reach out into the internet and rent a pawn created by your fellow gamers. Your pawn is in there too for everyone else to use. Pawns near your character level are free to rent, but if you start looking at pawns far past you, it will start to cost you rift crystals. Found in the world and earned when people borrow your pawn. You can rent a total of two pawns to create a well-balanced team, but they don't level with you, so you will be training them out Very often. Well. I shall lend you my aid. You do seem to be in need of it. I have a favor to ask. Would you be willing to hear it? While moving about, you will be approached every now and again by someone who desperately needs the help of an Arisen. Why? After hearing him out, you're given a new quest to undertake. The quest log usually shows you where you need to go, but sometimes there is no known destination and you're forced to look around manually. Sometimes you may have a pawn with you that has prior knowledge of the quest from playing with someone else. If you want, you can tell them to lead the way, taking a lot of the busy work out from searching. I lack information pertinent to this task. Consider hiring a pawn better apprised of such matters. Now we've the vim to tackle the day ahead. Come, we have much to be getting on. The world in Dragon's Dogma 2 is quite vast and full of amazing discoveries waiting for you. There are main paths between locations with small turns to side paths you can travel along. Finding monsters and meeting new people 
all the time. If you venture a little off the beaten path, you may be lucky enough to find a cave full of enemies and treasures. It's a good idea to keep your eyes peeled at all times. And your pawns may call out nearby hidden paths or caves, if you're lucky. In traversing other worlds, I came to know of a treasure chest in this area. Let my magic's draw you in a mental game. While in combat, you'll have access to the skills attached to your chosen vocation. But there is so much more to fighting than just those skills. In the battle area, you can find rocks or explosive barrels to pick up and throw at your enemies, doing massive damage. You can even pick an enemy up and throw them. There are a lot of ways to finish a fight quickly, if you take stock of the surrounding areas before getting into a fight. There may even be random NPCs walking nearby that hop in for some of that fun. Most of the enemies you encounter will be small things about your size, but there will be times when you come across a big beast, denoted with their own health bar at the top of the screen. These big baddies bring a whole mess of trouble with strong moves and a lot of health to burn through. You don't have to stay on the ground to take them out though. You can grapple onto their legs and start climbing to find a nice sensitive spot to hit. Eventually, knocking them over, making them prone to a lot of damage. The more you learn about your vocation and their move sets, these boss enemies can get much easier to deal with. I've all manner of arms for sale. Come. While exploring the game, you will find shops selling new gear and weapons for your characters, each new one providing higher stats at a much higher cost. The gear in stores is really good, but some of it can be found in the wild for free. You'll also be able to upgrade your gear at the shops. Upgrades require gold and materials ranging from plants to monster parts. The more useful the equipment, the rarer the parts you'll need to upgrade. Between you and your pawn, you could be spending a lot of money and time trying to get the best of the best. We could make the fruit rubber into ourselves or simply purchase some at Brunei's apothecary here. If you and your pawns tend to pick everything up, you'll end up with a lot of different plants and meats in your bags while adventuring. A few of these items can be mixed up together to make a lot of different items from curatives to arrows. It's helpful to have a small stash of heals on hand instead of depending solely on magical healing. One thing to watch out for would be the slow decay of items while in your bags. Edible foods will age and eventually go rotten, losing most of their nutritional usefulness. They can still be used to make lantern oil, so if you lose track of time, there's always that. An ox cart ought to make our journey easier. Walking everywhere is certainly tiring. Sometimes you don't want to go on a tedious journey between one place to another. In those cases, you have a couple of different options. There is an ox cart that travels the main road at certain times of the day. If you wanted, you could pay the driver and hop on. You can sit and watch the ox cart move slowly, or you can take a nap to wake up when you arrive, or if a band of monsters attack the cart on the way. Time will still move forward in the game, but in real time, it's fast travel. Or you can use a fairy stone to teleport to a discovered port crystal. There are a few permanent port crystals in the game, but you can also find a few to place wherever you want. I'm having a blast playing this game. I've put well over 40 hours into it and am nowhere near ready to finish it. With all the different areas to explore and treasures to find, I'm spending hours walking around and enjoying every minute of it. The environments are gorgeous and immersive. When I'm either walking deep in the forest with the sounds of the wind traveling through the trees and some songbirds singing their songs, or deep in a dark cave with the light of my lantern only reaching so far in front of me, and some scary monster roaring from the deep within, this game was so well made. It's obvious a lot of thought and work went into the creation of the combat system and vocations. Every vocation feels unique with a little crossover between a couple of them. Some are straight physical damage, others are magical damage, and a couple mixing the two damage types together for some awesome effects. I found a vocation I fell in love with but I'm still compelled to try them all out and at least max their level. It's 
easy to swap vocations and try new things. And not only the different vocation skills, but the option to grapple enemies or throw random items around in fights was a very cool mechanic to play with. I didn't even have to be in combat. I could pick one of my pawns up and throw them toward an unreachable point for them to throw a ladder down. It's awesome how many different routes are available to accomplish a single task. There were a lot of different quests to undertake while playing. Some were even time sensitive, so if I started it but didn't finish in the allotted time, it would fail, never to be tried again. And some quests have different outcomes depending on choices I made or how I finished it. I'm not clear on whether it changed the story much or just the rewards, but the game is good enough I'd want to go through again and try a few things differently. The overall story was alright, but it doesn't feel like the focus of the game. Of course, big things happened as I moved through, but it was much more enjoyable exploring and leveling up. Not that I would want a bigger focus on the story, the game is great as is. I just don't feel like the storytelling was front and center. Between exploring and taking on side quests, I almost forgot what was going on in the main story when I got back to it. Have you ever played any of the Dragon's Dogma games? Let me know your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And without further ado, it's time to rate this game. The visuals were excellent. The fine details on the monsters, awesome. I'm giving it a 5. The story didn't stand out in any special way, but it wasn't terrible. I'm going with a 3. The gameplay was smooth and worked exactly how it should, for the most part. Sometimes it was kind of difficult to command pawns to certain tasks, and there were some collision issues, but it's still getting a 4. Replayability feels very high as well. This game will definitely leave a mark and stay in my memory for a while, pulling me back in, I'm sure. It's getting another 4. Not sure if you can tell or not, but I absolutely love this game. I'm having so much fun, it's deserving of another 5. Giving Dragon's Dogma 2 an average score of 4.2 out of 5. Because of that, I'm going to be placing it on my special reserve. I love this game, like, in an unhealthy way. It's keeping me from getting work done, like, this review right here. And it's mocking me as I try to go to sleep at night at responsible times. It might be a problem loving a game this much, but it feels good. If you still don't feel like this is up your alley, you should check out some of the other RPGs and open world games I've reviewed in the past. I'm positive we can find something that you want to play.